I'd like to welcome Mark Hanschett and Victor Atlasman from New here today. They're visiting Gruber Motor Company, and we're about to take a tour and see what's going on inside. So we usually start people here because uh, they're expecting an auto shop, and this is an electronics lab, which yeah. really speaks to what we do. And what you'll see here is a number of devices on the bench. These are Tessa Roadster Power Electronic Modules, and there are two versions. This is the early version. This is the later version. Stopped making these in 2008. And the reason we're vital is because they will never make these again. And now this is old technology, and there are only 2,000 customers out there. So what we do is we actually rebuild these. We do the equivalent of an engine rebuild, changing 21 electrolytic capacitors, fixing engineering problems, decaying IGBT insulating material, and fundamentally replace all the wear components. What we do is unique in that there are no schematics, there's no documentation. Tesla doesn't even have this stuff. And we have to reverse engineer. We have to fix right down to component level on all of these Roadster electronics. So did you build your own schematics and your own diagrams? We did indeed, and the reason that we were able to do that is for 30 years we've been in a critical power business, Okay. and those OEMs treat us the same way that Tesla did at first. We thought they had it, just weren't sharing it. Turns out they didn't have a lot of stuff. So with the OEMs that we work with in critical power, we had to reverse engineer everything. And by the time we started getting into Tesla Roadsters, we just used those same skills to develop our own like, you know, documentation. How do you deal with the obsolete components? Like there's... It gets very tricky, yes. Uh, the IGBTs, for example, the manufacturers aren't going to do a small production run for old parts. They have better parts. Well, mm -hmm. boards don't like those better parts because all of the uh, bias voltages and all of that are set and the firmware is set to that old spec. So we have to scour the world basically, find NOS type parts, and sometimes you go out of the country, Estonia, China, you know, and sometimes we get gifts, like the company that originally made these um, these parts here, the what's called Power Electronics Module. There were um, three color LEDs in the Tesla Roadster uh, light ring. They were obsolete. And it turns out that they had some left in stock and they donated them to the cause because they realized we're keeping these cars alive. Do you get into the software at all or is it all? Oh, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Again, it's a combination of gifts from the industry. Mm -hmm. um, Tesla has helped out at times and uh, there's, there's firmware. There are software tools all written in Perl, old, uh, you know, software. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's one guy that retired about two years ago or so. He was the godfather of the Tesla Roadster firmware. And fortunately, we still have access to him as well. Um, how long? You say the license for a lot of the, the for, you know, it's like a particular like 10 year and then you start to see issues. We're going to have to start doing EV to EV conversions at some point because we can't keep this alive forever. So we're already beginning to set the stage for actually converting Tesla Roadsters to an upgraded drivetrain. And we have to be careful because um, in the world of cars, you have collector cars. Yeah, you have to keep that authenticity in those original parts. Precisely, because then it becomes a clone car and it's no longer a 1969 Plymouth Emi Cuda convertible yeah. with numbers matching transmission and engine and all that. In the world of electronics, we're not sure where they're going to cross those lines. But if the parts are no longer available, that's going to be the only option to keep these cars alive. And then I notice you have a bunch of circles over there, so I'm assuming those are like the zipper fusing. Uh, so. The circles are actually Tesla leftovers ah. and different color codes. We're still figuring out precisely what those mean. When we do our repairs, see the green and the red there? It was probably a wire bonding imperfection that they wanted to redo. When we find a resistive cell, we usually use a black mark and a, I don't see any here, so this one may not have gone through our process. But this is a test mule here. And what we do here is we test uh, the BMB boards, the battery mm. management boards. So we have nine bricks in here that actually feed voltages and that uh, we can repair the board. And do you actually... We don't do wire bonding, no. It's not necessary because we don't change the cell. Everybody asks that. 69 of them are. There are nine bricks. You can see this, this green one here. <laughs> this is a brick right here. Cooling jacket runs throughout, touches every single cell. And it's side cooling? Yes, yep, side cooling, and uh, it's it's an elegant design in that it set the uh, the basis for all the cars that came later. But yeah, everything you see in here is related to 
component level troubleshooting. <laughs> this is this is our chief engineer's pride and joy. See those blue things? You can see the insulating material. I wish I had some old stuff, but it actually crumbles and compresses and then eventually shorts. So a lot of the equipment we have to end up making, this is uh, critical power leftovers, things like uh, big thick aluminum bus bars and copper, tin plated copper. Mm -hmm. This is a 480 to 120 transformer that's been reversed. If you have a 480 volt UPS with you know that input power, you still have 120 volt devices in the UPS. So we feed this with a Variac and create like five, 600 volt AC and then rectify it. And this becomes one of our DC chargers not the museum I hear you are building one yes actually that's the building that uh, that burned it's going to be an exotic car storage facility yeah that'll be where the collector cars will end up going and this is the shop where you're working on that yeah and if you notice you'll see license plates from all over the United States sometimes all over the world we had the three Chinese roasters here until about three months ago the yellow one there is from the Ukraine Every Roadster seems to have a story. It's not your average Ford and Chevy. Mm -hmm. That car was sold in Florida about four years ago. It was being transported to California. It got stolen. Six months later, it turns up in Ukraine. They retrieved it, and it's here now, and we're putting it back on the road. Yeah, let's walk through here. I can show you the process of working on a Tesla Roadster. It's a combination of low-tech auto, brakes, suspension, and then, of course, the electronics based off the Lotus Elise chassis. Based off of, yes. Only 7% of this car today is Lotus Elise. The reason is they miscalculated everything. The thousand pound battery pack, and I think we have one pulled out over here. Let's go look at that. So this is the propulsion DC storage. And there to the left, you see a Model S, which is a flat. Under the floorboard. Yes, and it goes up inside that cavity. Yeah, it sits up behind the driver, right? Mm -hmm. Right. This was the reason they had to change even the frame because they couldn't fit it into the car. So then all the body panels changed. Mm -hmm. And because they were only doing 2400, the real vendors, the big ones, wouldn't give them the time of day. They had to go to B-grade vendors, um, and most of those are gone nowadays. You know, they just didn't right. survive. Yeah. That's the problem for us when we get a collision damage car like this. We have to rebuild the body panels even because you can't just go and buy a quarter panel. Even Tesla doesn't have this. You're saying only about 7% came with it. So just basically the body panel, um, some of them. What is left that is Lotus is the uh, suspension component, upper lower control arms. Okay. Um, you know, the, um, uh, the sway bar. Yeah, all of the body panels are now custom and uh, no longer in production. No, yeah, yeah, not today. This is the 11-point charger I started to show you over there. We have to build stuff like this, and what this does is it's got 11 DC to DC converters where we can dial in voltage and current, yeah. and then it Those balances familiar. all the sheets. Yeah. We built a, not with this exact solution, but uh, we were making battery cells. We had to come up with a way to scale cell production, and we just swap the cells and physically move them or flip switches. Look at this fuses inside here three of them here some more down here circuit boards contactors fuses inside that APS unit mm -hmm. which is the 400 volt to 12 volt and then more fuses up above this thing wasn't meant to be serviced it takes a half a day to properly pull one of these packs if they had put a hatch back here put the contactors and fuses back there then this would be far more serviceable but you can see some of the construction here this car is a local Scottsdale Roadster and um it has been rear-ended twice within the last year. The first one wasn't as bad as this. This last one actually crumpled the quarter panels. These are actually epoxied onto the chassis. Mm. What we have to do is get specialists that work with uh, fiberglass, oak company basically. Yeah. And they're going to rebuild this and then we'll do the fenders or the rear tub or whatever. You did a quick uh, Instagram post about visiting Lutcher Mechanica and you were noticing that it was in yes. the harbor lot. Yes, yeah. So it's not too far off. That is a validation prototype, which actually was a signature green, which is kind of a darkish green, not really a very sexy, but they did a wrap on this. I can't tell you the name who owned this, but it was somebody very important within Tesla years ago. This is getting the final stages of a battery repair, so it'll be back on the road. Um, and as I was telling you, the roasters typically have stories. We have, um, we have Matt Damon's car here, Red Hot Chili Peppers drummer's car is here somewhere. That is a Founders number three. Now, okay, Elon's got Founders one, Martin's got two. 
And this customer has not only Founders Number 3 Roadster, but Founders Number 3 Model S. The, the imperfections they sent these cars out with, notice the carbon fiber weave showing through? They didn't have the capability when they were first releasing these to fix things like this. Can you tell us about what's on the wall? Sure. T0. We had a fire in 2017. I owned one of three T0s. That's the one at the Peterson Auto Museum. This was the car that really started the EV revolution. In 1997, AC Propulsion Systems got a federal grant to build three electric sports cars to prove that they can be fun. Mm -hmm. This is our tax money at work, right? So they built three, they put lead acid batteries into the doors, just like we have displayed there. They took it to Laguna Seca and they started embarrassing Lamborghinis and Ferraris, mm -hmm. zero to 60 in four seconds. Most people asked, are you gonna mass produce this? And AC told them all the time, no, nope, we're an engineering company, we're not a car manufacturer. So that's when Martin got interested and decided, well, let me see if I can find a company that will sell us empty shell sports cars, and none of them were except Lotus. Mm -hmm. So that was the Roadster idea, and then they used that drivetrain, which is analog, highly unreliable, in the Tesla Roadster initially. Well, a little while later, Elon shows up at AC Propulsion with the same question. He said, do you mind if I build this car? And he said, well, you can do that, but there's a couple guys already doing it. And that's how Martin got acquainted with Mark Tarpening and Elon and uh, Martin Eberhardt. And it's the sister. The rest is history. Now, it burned up, so what we did was we sandblasted it, restored it to yellow color just to give you know people a glimpse what was inside this uh, unique car. So all the work that we do typically on, on the batteries now gets done in a battery bunker. And the insurance company is real happy about this because once you take these batteries out of the battery safety management system, it creates a whole new level of exposure and liability. So we took a 40-foot C container, a one-tripper they call it, so it was fairly new, and we skirted it with drywall and... Uh, I was telling Victor that we reuse a lot of our critical power stuff from mm -hmm. UPSs, like the bus bars here. Mm -hmm. uh, those are out of UPSs. They run the whole length, and we feed them with 48 or 50 volt power supplies and then have the same thing, the DC to DC converter. So you can essentially dial in what your charge rate is. And these are sheets and modules, as they call them in the later cars, mm -hmm. that are kept on life support waiting for them to become a donor in a car to put it back on the road. And we only do that if we find too many resistive cells where we can't fix that brick. Mm -hmm. Normally we do so we don't have to change the whole sheet. So this is kind of unique. A lot of innovation here too, like I needed a fork that was non-conductive. So I went to a quarry and uh, shop here and uh, they gave me some scrap and <laughs> that became the, yeah, that works. It yeah. works wonderfully. Yeah. Those are the stands for the modules. Those are UPS heat sinks on insulators for the feet. Mm -hmm. That is a uh, service or a data center AC unit, two and a half ton APC Symmetra. So you did use that to keep it cool during the summer. Yeah. 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 And then notice that the, the charging plug on these are very different than what we know. It's proprietary, of course. We've been trying to get those plugs. Now, Amphenol used to make them. But Amphenol won't make them anymore? Well, we can't find anybody within Amphenol that knows anything about them. It's kind of like Bilstein shocks. Oh, that would be wonderful. Yeah. But our goal is going to be to change it to a NAX socket. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We'll take the original out. Yeah. We'll, we'll put it in a trunk for collectible purposes. But in the meantime, a customer can just use NAX sure. and, uh, you know, they can't supercharge. But they, you know, they can certainly do destination charging. But yeah, I'll show you the connector. We actually rebuild those charge cables. We have to make special tools to take them apart. It's just over-engineered. Um, but yeah, that's the size of the connector and it's multiple layers to take it apart. Yeah, so that's the story on the Roadsters. Oh, I was just gonna show you all of the stuff we recycle. They've been throwing it in the copper bins and I started to collect some of it and save it. To me, it's just a sin to throw a nice piece of copper tin in yeah, copper <laughs> like that out. You know how much we have and how big they are. Yeah. Some of this stuff is from that big UPS I was telling you about. And of course, heat sinks galore. I mean, we send out every two or three weeks a bunch of them. Containers go out and get recycled. Well, gentlemen, thank you for touring our facility with us. It's been a pleasure meeting you finally. Thank you. And Victor, thank you.